Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another special edition of the Fooshcast. Um, with the year that it has been, we wanted to get uh, one more in before we close the book officially on 2020 and uh, bring in some, some good news, some good conversation. And we are fortunate enough um, today to be joined by NECA's own Trevor Zamet. Trevor, thank you very much for joining us today. Hey, Nick, how's it going? All right. Um, how, how's the world treating you um, during 2020 as it is? And did you have a good holiday season? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, holiday was good. Uh, the year's been interesting. Um, I, I never liked going outside anyways, you know, and I never really liked, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's been yeah. just staying indoors for me and avoiding people has been like kind of a blessing. It's, just, you know, little things are tough. You, if you want to just run out to the store real quick and like get something, that's that takes a ton of planning now, you know, you can't yeah. just zip in and out and like everything, everything has turned into like sort of Comic-Con rules, you know, like you go right. to the grocery store and there's a line to get groceries. You go to like, you know, like I, I'm always going to like, first day. <laughs> the, yeah, it's just, yeah, everything, that's what it, everything is like preview night, you know, that's 2020 yeah. is just the pandemic has turned shopping and just going outside doing anything into yeah, like preview night at Comic Con. It's just, it's crazy. You know, for better or worse, well, like things are all right here. Well, that's good. What What about for work? Um, how How How's the How's the pandemic changed how you've had to operate as far as work goes? For me, it hasn't changed that much. I was already working from home. Uh, the rest of you know, NECA's main office is in New Jersey, mm -hmm. so a lot of the guys there. Um, you know, they had to shift and, and kind of, you know, they're bringing stuff in and dropping stuff off. And, you know, some of the painters and they're all working from home now. So it, I think it was a bigger adjustment for them. I mean, I'm in California. Uh, I work from home, you know, all the time anyways. And, you know, I get the factories send me samples directly. Nothing really changed. Everyone else kind of went on to my schedule, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's cool. But, but it, speaking of work, what, what, what officially now, what is your title or, you know, your scope of responsibility now? Um, at, at um, yeah. So when I, I left for a little bit to go work at DC direct. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I came back, Randy wanted to hire me on as the brand manager for Ninja Turtles. Cause it, they had just signed the deal with, uh, with Target. So it was going to be like much bigger than, you know, just like, four figures at comic-con a year like they had yeah. they had big plans to just you know kind of do tons more stuff with like the movies and the cartoon figures and so randy wanted me to come back and, and manage the you know the whole brand so so basically i'm like I, I still do a little bit of sculpting on the turtles but mainly it's art directing uh sculptors and painters and uh and working with the package design people i'm focused on ninja turtles i don't really do too much else yeah uh, these days and, and is that is that all the Ninja Turtles lines? It's guys... yeah, it's like the four main categories we have are like movie, cartoon, video game, and comic books. I oversee like all of the development of like all that all that stuff. You know, I, I think you're unique in a lot of um, aspects as far as you do still do some of the the sculpting on the line, which I don't think is always typical um, of of a brand manager. But what what's <laughs> no. what, what does a typical day look like for you when 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 you start work? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of everything. You know, the morning is always you know going through emails uh you know making sure stuff at the factory is kind of running smoothly i usually get a couple images like we get turnaround photos from the sculptors and they'll be and because i'm in california i'm a few hours behind so like new jersey like they're already you know painting and, and sculpting stuff on the east coast so you know so i'll get a couple texts and a couple emails from like the painters like what do you think of this or that like here's you know here's an eyeball or something to review so it's yeah. you know the morning is always just kind of getting everything like figuring out where like projects where everyone's at like like a status update on on all the projects and then middle of the day I try to um I try to do a little bit of sculpting like it's a lot of like just going through reference and like I'm usually either watching the movie or the cartoon or I'm looking through uh you know the comic books just to like pull reference or I'm watching like a, a walkthrough of a video game if we're working on turtles in time or something so it's every day i'm either like watching movies or playing video games or reading comic books like 
you know, just grabbing reference and making notes like, oh, this would be a cool accessory. And then we have this massive uh, kind of archive of reference now. And I just, you know, it's sending, making sure everyone's got all the, all the stuff they need to like, so they can do their jobs. And, and you've got to be mostly responsible for the reference material, right? I don't imagine you guys were handed a ton of reference material for all of these uh, different categories when, when the no, deals well, cause like, yeah, that. we, we kind of gather it on our own because, you know, Nickelodeon just like acquired all of this stuff. They kind of bought the rights and it's, you know, with any of the, those like big media companies, when you're dealing with these properties that are 30 something years old, you know, and we're doing like the original stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure like Nickelodeon has tons of reference for like the 2012 show and like rise of the TMNT, but for like for the Henson movies and the original cartoon, like, they, they don't have the, the model sheets or like any of the real, none of that stuff I don't think was really archived that well. Okay. And if it was, it didn't get transferred over to them, you know? So yeah, we just, we just watched the cartoon and uh, when something cool pops up or there's something neat that happens, it's like, oh, that would be a good, like this could make a good figure. So we'll just, you know, I'll take some screenshots and, and uh yeah, and then it just goes into a folder. Well, your your research uh, shows because I, I tend to fancy myself a pretty big Turtles fan, but admittedly, <laughs> I know that I've had to ask you a couple of times. Um, yeah, about you, some, we've some talked a few things. <laughs> yeah, you and like and Matt that does all your your photography. Like he'll email me or something. He's like, I can't like just the other day. It was like, what's that medallion that Splinter has? Like, what's that yin yang thing? And, uh -huh. and I, I had forgot. I thought originally I thought it was the episode. I think I told you it was the episode where Mikey is hypnotized to like stop eating pizza. And then it's not that it's like, it's a medallion from the Mondo Gecko episode because uh, Michelangelo's having these bad dreams and Splinter tries to like <laughs> do some, he hypnotizes him to like pull these, memories out of his head i think there's almost like 200 episodes from the show and it's yeah you know there's a lot of just weird little things and i gotta write every little thing down because it's like if i forget what there's like a ray gun we just sculpted it huh. turns out it's not a ray gun it's like this freeze gun thing and it's and then i had to go through like 50 episodes to find like to backtrack to see where we <laughs> where we got it from because sometimes i'll just take one Im i'll get one image and you the sculptors need to see it from like front and back and you know top right. and bottom views and nothing's ever really that consistent right so from one scene yeah. to another like who knows how they drew you know it's just the drawings are all over the place so it drives sculptors crazy and then i have to go back and find what episode this little doohickey's from you know and it's right. Oh God. Yeah. It takes all day sometimes. Well, well, when you talk about, you know, um, what you actually take on as far as, you know, sculpting yourself and, and what you provide art direction to other people for, um, is there a clear line that you draw? It's like, okay, this is the type of stuff that I am going to handle. And this is the type of stuff that somebody else is going to handle. Or is it just kind of a, on an as is needed collaborative type of thing? I, I, yeah. I always want the stuff to be really good. So I always make sure that like a really good sculptor <laughs> is working on it. So that's like, I try, right, especially now, I'm just, like, I like doing the, you know, the accessories, like, the weird little paper comic books or, like, the blueprints or, you know, little, like, those wanted posters. I love, like, just yeah. doing all that stuff because it's, like, quick and simple and there's, like, little deep cut references to, like, uh, you know, Jersey Red and Scrag and, like, just weird, you know, some of the gangsters, Big Louie yeah. and all of them, Don Tertelli. I'll focus on that stuff because I, I don't want this. I want the sculptors actually sculpting. I don't want them like watching this show all day, just like, you know, right. getting lost in that rabbit hole. I, I don't do like full figures at all. I'll do little bits and pieces. And if something needs to be tweaked or reworked, I might touch it a little bit. But yeah. um, I just, yeah, right now, I just, I don't have the time to to sit down and because every time I want to sit down and focus and like work on a figure there's like three or four other things that come in from left field like you know loot crate will need some artwork and then like there's a packaging thing like we need to get like reference for yeah it's really hard to just buckle down and like stay focused and just like get a figure done so it's it's much easier to just leave that to the you know the the real sculptors this past year for all of its its challenges was was a pretty pretty huge year for i think all the categories some um, that you guys uh, have worked on um and you know it's it's like 
movie, video games, cartoon, they've all kind of blown up exponentially. Do you have a do you have a favorite piece that came out this this last year that you guys did? It changes. Like earlier in the year, I I just I love that cartoon Slash cuz he's so mm-hmm. dopey and weird and you know, like the video game Slash is like way more iconic and and cool looking. I really like those. I, Granitor, I always wanted a Granitor figure. So yeah. You know, that like though like Granitor I sculpted years ago. And it finally came out this year, but like yeah, earlier in the year it was like probably cartoon slash or Granitor. And it, it, it now like the um I have like the Triceratons, they're sitting on this shelf over here. I'm looking at them and like the uh-huh. orange, like the Triceraton, the infantryman, that guy, I think he turned out really good. He's like this big hulking brute. He's really cool. Yeah. I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff like um, in like the tour turtles like the (laughs) fact that we made like the like and that was randy's idea like randy suggested he was like what do you think if we did like the you know coming out of the shells tour i was like oh my god like you got it seriously (laughs) like that's something like because i thought that was something i'd have to like trick him into thinking it was a good idea you know because if i had pitched that to him i was like there's no way he's gonna go for it but yeah yeah it, it was cool and like those figures like jason did the new heads where they're like oversized and they have the like the flapping mouths and like the yeah. crazy like Chuck E. cheese style like eyeballs right. you know mm-hmm. and i got to sculpt the little sneakers on them i did like some of the what did i sculpt on those? i sculpted the, the new belts with all the sequins but it was like sculpting tennis shoes for Ninja Turtles, like movie turtles, you know, it was like, they're, it's so goofy, but it's, oh man, it, that was, that was a lot of fun, you know, and then I. Especially since those shoes came out of like a, a stage need because they couldn't run yeah, around in the turtle. They need. couldn't, yeah, it was like uncomfortable to perform, you know, for an hour or two, whatever it was, like in the turtle boots or whatever they had. So yeah, they were just like f it let's wear sneakers <laughs> you know and then yeah. the, like the shells came off because the shells were too heavy so they were like yeah. we'll just wear jean jackets you know and it's <laughs> yes like slowly but surely like they just kept losing like costume elements you know throughout the course of that tour so yeah i don't know there there was a lot of cool stuff like it's really um we just get to work on like it's the most fun stuff token razar super shredder like those also like massive figures the, that you the, know, I never, like, sculpts are incredible <laughs> yeah and that that was all jason fraley just like doing what he does best like jason's just he's such a good sculptor and he's obsessed with like henson and puppets and like he loves labyrinth and dark crystal and all that stuff mm-hmm. and and so to just let him like run wild and like and do token raza it's like you know you just sit back and let him do his thing you know and it, like all those spikes on the shell yeah he put like the eye, like the articulated eyebrows like that was all jason just like you know making them as cool as he possibly could and they they turned out great too you know we put i i sat there and like put all the chains on razar trying to figure out like and that's that's like where i come in with these projects like that's a good example of you know you sit there and you watch the movie frame by frame I know like Razar has chains all over him, but you have to figure out like how all that stuff actually was connected, you know, and it, right. you have to stitch it back together, like just through, hopefully he turns and you see his back in one shot. Cause if you mm-hmm. don't have that, then it's like, there's no way you're going to find reference to that online, you know? So, right. um, yeah. So I would, once Jason was done with the sculpts, like I took a day or two, I went and found a bunch of different, styles of chain that kind of matched because there's a really specific weird looking chain that they used in the movie but yeah then so i so you work all that stuff out you make sure it doesn't interfere with articulation at all yeah you know and then, I, and then i'm like drawing up diagrams like for the factory because then you have to explain to them you know that it's going to loop through here and come up around the shoulder and then there's a small piece that connects you know across the neck in the back and you have to make it like as as simple as possible because the factory's got to like assemble you know like thousands of these things and they do it all by hand yeah. right there's no machines or anything that can just automatically put this stuff together so you have to like break down like awesome. how you know how it all is going to work and, and they can do it quickly because they're just you know it's an assembly line yeah. so you got to like you know just knock that stuff out every project we work on is is cool and 
and fun and um and there's tons of tons more stuff coming up next year that like we haven't shared yet it's really exciting stuff <laughs> like it's just all yeah cool. well i think the movie is a good a good place to, to to talk about that because you know toka and razar and super shredder were kind of um the the entry into you know the secret of the ooze uh, as far as that goes are, are you guys taking um more of a turtles two approach as we go into to next year or is it going to be you know kind of a scattershot more like like this year's been yeah there's going to be more turtles two stuff more secret of the ooze there's still a few more things from part one that we we want to do. Randy was talking about the last time that we spoke to him that uh, like another KC at least will be coming and we know April's coming too. So yeah. So there's those guys. And then like we teased the shadow warriors last year. That, that was one I was really excited about, like getting to do proper, like just kind of prequel style flashback, like mm -hmm. Oroku Saki and Hamato Yoshi figures. Cause you know, just in the overall mythology, like those are two really important characters that neither of them really have a lot of like action figure representation. You know, they're pretty iconic on their own. And that scene, that's a really cool scene in that first movie, like where Saki comes in, like kind of, you know, surprises Yoshi and kills Tan Shen and slices Splinter's ear off. You know, it's like those yeah. all make cool figures. So yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that scene was a game changer for me. Cause up until that point, you know, I was cartoon based and, and Yoshi was splinter. So to see, yeah. you know, shredder go even older than that was, that was really cool. Yeah. So those, those are going to be real cool figures. Randy said that you might have a, a logistical advantage when talking about a certain uh, Tatsu uh, as far, as far as that goes, is he, is he somebody that you guys are still exploring? Yeah. He's been really hard to like track down. Um, that's Tatsu's always been one of my favorite characters. Like since I was a kid, I would I would use my Ninjor from uh, He Man oh, as yeah. like a, as Tatsu, you know. And I was like just playing with my turtle figures. I've just I've always thought Tatsu was like such an awesome uh, character. Like he's a legit like kind of badass martial artist, and he has like books and uh, movies, and like he's done a lot of stuff. It, it's it it it's such a waste in the films that like they didn't let him actually display more of his like martial arts, like his, you know, yeah. prowess. He's got like his own kind of martial arts style. I think he's really famous for doing like this, like sword slicing through a helmet demonstration, you know, like he can take an old samurai helmet and just like whack it in half. He's out here in LA. And I like, if there, if it wasn't for like COVID, you know, I would mm -hmm. like, if we weren't all in lockdown, I'd just go over there with a bunch of Ninja Turtle toys and be like, hey, like, look, we, we want to make a figure of you. Like, Tatsu's great. We've tried to call him and email him with not, not much success. Uh, Randy wants me to just, like, go over there. But who knows if he's even there, you know, because he's, yeah. you know, he's kind of an old guy now. And uh, I don't know if he's working every day or maybe he's working from home just like we are, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's the pandemic has made it very challenging to just sort of you know do those like cold calls or kind of yeah just uh you know what i mean it's i, I gotta figure out somehow to get a hold of him well yeah because and he's really like the you know you, you mentioned yoshi and and saki but then then tatsu i mean those are for, for the first movie those are really the big ones that are are, are still out there i think yeah. so that that would that'd be really exciting in season five they did a really good tatsu episode with that blind swordsman and that's really the only other mm -hmm. time I think we've seen Tatsu in anything. I think uh, Tatsu, he was a, a boss character in one of the old video games too. But yeah, you're right. it, I think it's Hyperstone uh, Heist, maybe. So, so speaking of the cartoon, um, uh, I, I I just got um, Krang and then uh, Splinter and Baxter yesterday. Um, oh. They arrived, which was which was pretty exciting. But it, it awesome. seems like after the the initial you know, impact of the pandemic in China with shipping delays and things like that. Once things really started rolling in like July of this last year, stuff has been coming out um, really regularly, like about a month apart, um, it, it, it yeah. seems like um, at this point. Is that the kind of schedule that you guys are, are, are hoping and, and looking to keep now that, you know, things are really, I think, running on all cylinders? Yeah, that, that was intentional. Like that was the thing. Um, Randy wanted to, to shift something. So we'd have we try to have something out like every month 
Mm -hmm. instead of a wave of like three two packs and then having a big gap in between like you know three four months go by before the next set are out it was like why don't we just try and hit like you know every month another two so like like casey uh, and april and and yeah yeah it was casey and april with like the battle damage foot soldiers and then leatherhead and slash that was wave three and those were all a little bit staggered but they pretty much hit at the same time and then after that it was like yeah there was like uh trag and then like the the xerax and zork and the infantrymen and yeah every month we're trying to get about one or two things and then like metal head was in there somewhere and so, yeah we're trying to stagger it a little bit so it's you know it's a, maybe a little easier on your wallet that you don't have to yeah. just you know shell out tons of money at once for for everything well and, and it seems like people are are having more success with finding stuff to it as we're going along too so that that looks to be um improving as well but hopefully yeah i mean we're in every wave it's like we're making more because the stuff is like (laughs) it's exceeding like all expectations and and even like randy said this before in interviews i know it's like the people at target or walmart and, and and even like you know at neca it's you think like nothing will outsell turtles right so you, mm-hmm. they want to order kind of less stuff with like the side characters like trag and granitor and all that but it seems like it just it doesn't matter who it is like metalhead yeah. was you know some people th- think of him as like a minor character but like if you grew up with these guys they're all like having a giant metalhead figure is like so cool something a lot of people wanted so it's every every wave we're making more and more stuff and hopefully that's you know that's helping like just so there's it's not like there's one at a showing up at a store and then you miss out and it's gone and yeah i don't know the 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 volumes increased i think on like every order and then we go back and do reorders too if something's Mm -hmm. popular and it sells out we're gonna we're gonna make more be up and rock steady yeah exactly even like metalhead there's been reorders on him uh, i think on casey and raf like the movie two pack it's not like it, you had one shot to get it and you missed it and you're screwed you know it's yeah it's um i get i get the frustration because you just want to go to the store and find buy the thing that you're you're looking for like anytime i go to target like there. there's never <laughs> anything like there's no marvel legends there's no black yeah. series like yeah you know there's there's a couple mcfarlane like dc characters that i want and it's like you I can't find anything. It's it's uh, the GI Joe stuff, you know. Oh. It's, Ugh, yeah. It, every everything is is impossible to find. So yeah, we're we're making more figures, and and you know we're trying to make them available online. You know, occasionally like those stuff will go up for like a pre order for like a mm-hmm. week or something. And that, that that that's really that's really good um, to 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 hear. And and the Splinter and Baxter set and Krang. They kind of take us through the end of um, the last shipping schedule update um, that, that, you know, you guys put out, you know, a couple of months ago. I would assume that either Rat King and Vernon or Muckman and Mondo Gecko, those are, those are kind of the next ones in the, in the pipe line, right? Yeah, the next two pack is Rat King and Vernon. Um, I have samples here. Look, show mm-hmm. and tell. So here's the Vernon. Were Rat Vernon. Vernon. Um, but yeah, there's that's crazy, and, <laughs> and yeah, Rat King. These these guys will be the next two, and so Rat King's okay. got these little rats that you can like clip to his arms, and he's got a mutagen canister like where the oh, cap it's broken comes off. Open, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, cool. Dropped. But yeah, he's <laughs> he's cool. You can he's got the flute, you know. But yeah, yeah, these will be the next two, like early. In the first, you know, first quarter next year, these mm-hmm. guys will be out. They're they're in production now. Probably okay. shipping soon. And and then Mondo and Muckman probably after that. Do you anticipate do you anticipate those sets getting done prior to Lunar New Year before we kind of hit that month long um, pause or not? I don't think it'll happen for Muckman and Mondo, but okay. definitely. Definitely Rat King and Vernon, I think, are shipping before Chinese New Year. Those have been in production, and they those should ship definitely before then. I just got a deco sample for Muckman. I know he's oh. a favorite of yours. Yeah, he looks awesome. I, I just I got love... him, I think, yesterday this showed up. He's real cool. I, I love the positioning of how 
Joe sits and he, he he sits perfectly right behind his shoulder, just like on, on the show. That's perfect. Cause the old vintage yeah. figure, you kind of hid behind him. You couldn't really see him, but this. Yeah. If you pose him right, like, yeah, he's got, he's got a, um, like a big ball joint in his torso. Uh -huh. So you, you can lean him back and make him tall. But if you kind of hunch him over and like tilt him to the side, then you get a good shot of Joe eyeball, in the, you know, right over his shoulder. Yeah. Joe eyeball, his, his head, He's got a ball joint on his head, so. Oh, cool. Even that, you can just sort of, you can tilt it and adjust it a little more if you need to. He's really cool. Yeah, so, he's awesome. <laughs> just, yeah. it, like some of these, they do look like they step right out of the show. Like they're, yeah, the, uh, they're, they're cool. Seeing like the mirror and, and, and whatnot on him, it's like, oh yeah, that really, that, that was even a part of the old Playmates toy too, but it wasn't painted, so it didn't stand out to you. So it's cool seeing all that junk. The, the Playmates, <laughs> yeah, the Playmates figures have a ton of detail that, you know, they just, for, I guess, for costs or whatever, they didn't paint that stuff. So yeah, you see guys online that like, that'll do like a full paint job. Yeah. on the old figures and there's there's so much detail it really pops when you you know you go in there like trag and muck man and oh god there's like so oh, many i think it's another one that's got a ton of stuff and rat king even does rat king, there's a lot of weird stuff on and with that little dead cat that he wears uh -huh. around his waist and with the tire treads on <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the roadkill cat thing there's and some of it is gruesome too even i think on trag or one of them like there's like a squashed baby turtle like sculpted on the treads of his boot, you know? Yeah. Like I think there's a few figures that are like, they're kind of violent and, you know, kind of gruesome if you, yeah. if you really think about like what is going on there. You yeah, know? I, with, with Trag, I don't think I realized this until I was an adult that his helmet is actually a turtle shell, right? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, like Bebop and Rocksteady, like they have like, Rock said he's got a turtle shell in his belt and Bebop's got him on his shoulder pads. And uh, yeah, it's like, they're just like hacking turtles to bits, you know, <laughs> like all their weapons. There's like, there's swords, you know, where there's like turtles like skewered through the sword uh -huh. and stuff. That Muckman and Mondo Gecko um, set, that, that's kind of an eclectic pairing. I mean, did you guys just decide that those were the two figures that you wanted to do next and then they got put together? Or is there is there some like deeper logic as far as, you know, putting them together in a two pack? No, it's not that deep. It's just like whatever figures are ready. And then honestly, like those two might end up getting split up now into like their own single releases because really, th yeah, the co I know the cost came back from the factory that they're higher than you know, what we could afford for a two pack. And I think they're getting broken up into s their own single releases. But a lot of the time with the pairings, it's just whoever's ready to go, you know, like Rat King and Leatherhead would make sense because they have several episodes together. Um, you know, they're kind of like a pair on the show, but like Rat King, we didn't even have them sculpted when Leatherhead was ready to come out. So that's why like, yeah. Leatherhead and Slash went together because they were just ready to go, you know. So well, and, and they had they had a little bit of a connection on what is it, the Night of the Night of the Rogues? That that's a cool set that we got to get. Night of the Rogues is cool, it. yeah, because that's got so many of them for story purposes. Like if it does work out, you know, then that's great. But a lot of the time, it's just like, who can we fit together and it'll hit the price point we need. We don't have to put in just a like a repaint of a turtle or like another foot soldier, you know, because it's like some, yeah. that would be very easy to do if we just like every, every two pack had one new figure and then like a repainted turtle. And then, yeah, you know, then you have like a hundred turtle. I don't know. So yeah, we try to, we try to put it all like all new characters when we can. And, and speaking of new um, characters, what I think it was, was it Christmas Eve where you guys like decided you were just going to like drop a bomb on uh, everybody <laughs> with the, cartoon yeah. checklist and then all of a sudden my my brain's exploding but uh looks like uh my, my boys the punk frogs they may be uh rolling rolling out soon huh yeah they're done they're awesome um yeah. i have a couple of I, this guy you might not recognize this figure he's he's in disguise but yeah here's here's one of here's one of them here oh that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> So, is that all one piece that sits on there it's yeah the hat and the yeah. glasses are all one piece and then like that's from an episode where Genghis uh -huh. comes to visit this he in the in the episode he's wearing like a full disguise like a like a blue suit yeah but um you know we'd have to sculpt the whole new 
suit for the you know for the figure but yeah here's this is Genghis and uh, and he looks awesome and I love seeing the double knees cool. and all of that so you can really get him down into a, a frog crouch uh yeah uh, that, that's great and and it looks like um I, I from I've been I've been pouring over those the right. that checklist that oh the piece <laughs> the piece fingers <laughs> That's great. And it, and it looks like you've got at least a couple of different expressions for them. For them they each right? have two heads. Yeah. yeah. There's there's sort of like a grimacing, like mm -hmm. freaked out head and then like a happy smiling head. And like those are the same for each figure. OK. Um, but they, you know, they come with the there's a peace sign. There's like a groovy like thing pointing yeah. thumbs up. They all have like a different set of hands to give them a little more like personality and you know, posability and stuff. I assume those are the, each two of the, those going to be paired together. For yeah, a set this or, Genghis, yeah. and I think this is Rasputin with the the bow and arrow. So mm -hmm. they're like they have the polka dot shirts yeah. and the little triangle pendants. Mm -hmm. So those two are paired together, and then it's Attila and Rasputin mm -hmm. that have the. I guess they have the circle pendant, uh -huh. and they've got the striped shirts, and then yeah. those two will be like out later on, like. We'll probably put something in between. I think maybe a stuck or, or something else will go between. So like the frogs are spaced out so people don't get confused, you know? So you get, yeah. you get two and then wait a bit and then you get two more later. So you're not, you know, you're not getting the same two, you know, too many times. I got to say the, the the frogs and the, the neutrinos, when you guys started, you know, this <laughs> line, I was like, those are the yeah. two groups that never really, I mean, I guess the neutrinos kind of did in the vintage line eventually. It yeah, towards the time, end with the Toon but... Turtles, they got, you know, we got all three neutrinos. We got the other two. Yeah. Because they had already done Zach early on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we never, that was the thing, like we never got all four punk frogs in the original line. I've been waiting for and, these since like 89, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah, a lot of the figures are like that. Like we never got a roadkill Rodney, you know, and that yeah. was. That's like, crazy. That's crazy. They were cool. Because in that, that kind of stuff, what I like doing in this line now is, you know, like there's Joe Eyeball and Screw Loose and there's that little beaver guy that came with Monty Moose. Like a lot of the figures have those little yeah. sidekick buddies. Yep. And I like, you know, we want to do that with ours too, but make them all from the show. So there's like the gerbil Mikey uh -huh. or when he's turned into a hamster, a little gerbil yep. and shredders like mutated so many times he turns into a fly and there's a baby yep. of them. And there's, you know, there's just and pigeon Pete, like all mm -hmm. the little sidekicks <laughs> that we're putting oh, in the I'd show. Forgotten about him. <laughs> yeah. So, and like pigeon Pete's going to be in that big four pack with the, the disguised turtles. Oh, where they have really? the trench coats and everything so yeah all the like all the guys all the little buddies on the on the show are gonna be hopefully in you know little action figure glorified accessories at some point that's awesome the the disguise yeah. turtles was another thing that you guys kind of made i guess a little bit more um a, a official the, this time around now um it looks like yeah, they were, you know, they were on the checklist too yeah, you, you've got at least a couple of different expre new expressions on these. Now, the first question I had when I saw them was, is this going to have kind of the same ability as what you guys are looking to do with the quarter scale where you can swap out the masks and, and the faces for them? Yeah, they're interchangeable. There's a test shot. I don't know if you can tell, like, with any, it's unpainted, but mm -hmm. basically, like, the head, it pops off. Gotcha. Here's the mouth. Yeah the ball joint for the neck is in the top of the head. So it's, wow. it should be really easy to just like, you know, you take one head off and, and yeah. pop it on another one. And then you just like, you know, stick it onto the, onto the neck on the figure. There's like angry eyes and then happy eyes. And then <clears throat> like four different expressions, I think with the mouth, you know, wow. so it's kind of a neutral and a laughing and a wide open, like freaked out. And then like a grimacing, like gritted teeth, like angry, kind yeah. of like a fighting pose so you can you can just mix all those around and get all kinds of different expressions which is and that too that was another thing that jason fraley came up with he's like do you think we could possibly have these heads interchangeable and, and i was like let me i think like let's check with the factory i think we can do it because like we you guys don't really see this but you know we know how like the figures are like kind of just broken apart anyways at, at the factory the way a figure's cut up and 
parts the mm-hmm. parts are separated out for for tooling like for injection purposes you know and the way they paint them like the the mask the bandana is like a separate piece you know from the top of the head and usually the head the top of the head is is usually a separate piece from the mouth and the cheeks anyways well instead of just like tooling this so it, like they get glued together just put like a pressure fit little tab in there you know and yeah. then we can make them actually interchangeable and it looks like too that they're they're ma- not their not their turtle masks but they're <laughs> crazy looking people masks um th- those look like are, are those all unique um from one there's to the two. Next two there's one that's kind of laughing and then there's like a um uh just like this frumpy kind of frowning like because mm-hmm. they whenever they wore those masks on the show they they had like the weirdest expressions yeah you know? and uh yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 those are those are two heads that I sculpted a couple of years ago, hoping maybe someday like we would do a turtle with a trench coat. Well, this is a good way to get the the turtles back out there um, since yeah. it's kind of been a minute um, now, and yep. that's going to be a four pack that's coming relatively soon. Uh, yes, relatively soon. It should be first quarter next year, and that one too. The box is really cool. The box is like got that VHS style. Uh, illustration on the uh-huh. on the front and then the the back and the sides have just like tons of easter egg little you know hidden little gems in there like just yeah. weird stuff from the show there's like a building you know like mm-hmm. so in the windows of the building there's a couple silhouettes of like some fan favorite characters that really may or may not be producing i don't know this may be their only way to like get them <laughs> in the line <laughs> what what burned so, girlfriend from the first uh, season or <laughs> tiffany yeah this yeah, may be tiffany. the only time you see tiffany yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that that that's cool i'm i'm looking forward to it um especially with um you know the the, the new heads and whatnot so that's cool and then and then the that the hats look to be plastic but the the jackets and the pants are cloth right yeah that's correct and they're removable so yeah. again on the show sometimes they wear pants with the coats sometimes they don't right uh so yeah they're just like they've got these little blue jeans uh that are fabric you can take those off the coat is removable the coat's got little pockets in it you know it's they're really cool. Um, yeah, hats are removable. Mikey even has the weird pizza hat from the <clears throat> the episode where he's delivering pizzas and the neutrinos, yeah. like you know, Star Cruiser. Yeah, that's awesome. So, <clears throat> yeah. What, what what about the bodies? Are the bodies the same as the the current turtles, or are those different? They're they're pretty much the same. I think there's a little bit of articulation upgrade, like in the ankles and uh, maybe the elbows but they're it's basically it's the same body there's a bunch of hands i think it's all the same hands the new stuff are the heads the masked heads the hats there's a boom box uh, a couple new pizzas because you can't have enough pizzas pigeon pete a skateboard um oh that's where the skateboard skateboard is coming for all the way yeah so (laughs) when i when i first got back to to neca from dc i was just i was just like making all these accessories like making a boom box the skateboard pigeon pete uh weird pete like there's a pizza that's got like some fish and and uh ice cream and just yeah. weird like gross toppings and stuff and i was like well you know we'll we'll put these we'll find a place we'll find a home for these like i just i was like just sculpting like tons of just crazy stuff and yeah. uh knowing someday we'd either do like ultimate turtles you know where it's you know it's one figure like just loaded up with accessories and and so anyways they all ended up in this uh in this four pack you don't have to get it but if you if you want to get like the turtles again there's tons of cool stuff in there there's like a reason to rebuy well well speaking of little teases from toy fair i i (laughs) i thought it was fun when you guys had the cartoon diorama and it had all the ace duck movie posters because as a kid for some reason, Ace Duck was one of my favorite figures, but in the cartoon, <laughs> he's a pretty deep cut. So barely um, even there. Yeah, I, I get that maybe because from from looking at it, maybe if I'm seeing it correctly, a little bit of Vernon lends himself to Ace Duck, but to to get a, a deep cut like Ace in the line, um, 
That's awesome. I, I was shocked. He of all of them, he was the one I was the most shocked to see on, oh, on, the, really? on the checklist. Yeah, and yeah, once we had the Vernon body tooled, like we're gonna get a little bit of reuse out of that because like he's mm -hmm. the Vernon body is basically, you know, the video game Baxter because he's okay. That one's taller. Like Baxter in the cartoon's so short. So in the in the game, usually the the bosses are always kind of way bigger than the turtles are. Yeah, so Vernon's body is fairly versatile for just like reusing like generic you know it's just a good basic like generic human body um yeah. so it, it worked really well for it that's how we got a stuff made um there's a few other characters that'll probably at some point show up with that <laughs> that body some new pieces swapped out here and there yeah um but yeah ace is cool and like yeah he's he's only on tv like they're watching this ace duck film festival yeah on tv so that kind of implies that like in the turtles universe like there are ace duck movies so uh -huh. i had my friend dan elson that he does all the vhs illustrations you know for the like metalhead and krang mm -hmm. and, and and all those things i just i had him like we looked at all this reference from like old like movie serial posters like like pulp crime fiction novels and comics and yeah. all this like we just so i just had I, I i came up with some crazy titles uh for a stuck movies that may exist in the you know in the world and then yeah. dan just went to town like doing these cool these great movie fake movie posters for a stuck so we kind of like fleshed out the actual a stuck movie marathon that like is only mentioned briefly on the show and so, yeah so, so that's that's gonna come with the figure then <clears throat> we'll probably repackage some of the posters with ace uh -huh. um it is those posters are with the street scene diorama oh good so that was oh. just more like it's always easy to do paper accessories and it kind mm -hmm. of it doesn't take a lot to um they, i think they add a lot to the whatever it is a figure or a place or a vehicle um but and they're relatively cheap to make you know because the factory's just printing this stuff out like those you know we made those crazy neutrino wanted posters with Oh, I drag and granator, like them, I, you know. Yeah, I put them on the the the, the dioramas. <laughs> yeah, I those I wanted to be all like kind of Blade Runner looking, like those are wanted mm -hmm. posters in Dimension X. Like there's more of a hologram projection. I think it was because yeah. I was watching like season one of Mandalorian. You know, yeah. and the little the little bounty pucks. Yeah, have that little hall, and I was like, maybe we could do that for Get the neutrinos that way. Oh, for yeah. the neutrinos, you know? yeah, that's awesome. Again, maybe though, like that might be the only way neutrinos have any like representation in the line. You know, I don't know oh, if we'll do those. You're, you're killing me. We may. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I can't say for sure. Maybe those will be sculpted. Up. So, so Ace may find himself out um, in between the frog sets, but I. It, 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 it looks like if the frogs are coming together, we don't know who is going to be coming with Ace yet, right? I know. <laughs> okay, that was more. The it hasn't been game. announced yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't we haven't announced it, but he is the plan there. Also, as long as everything costs out, it's a it's a it's a villain. Uh, he's real cool. Um, very unique look on the show. Uh, so hopefully, it's Ace Duck and. <laughs> You know, yeah that's the plan again it might change like <clears throat> we had intended muckman and mondo to be together but yeah muckman's big and you can't put out mondo without that skateboard you know right it's just you know they're two and it's pretty much you know those two are all new tooling like there's no reused parts on any of that stuff a lot of the new characters we're doing just because you know everything's been selling so well you know, we've been able to spend a lot more on tooling, which is really cool. Yeah, there's like Rat King is 100% all new. Vernon was all new. Muckman is all new. Mondo is all new sculpting. There's no reuse parts. So, and there's a lot more figures that we've been working on the last few months that, again, it's just from head to toe. It's like, it's all new stuff. That, that's that's exciting. Um... <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the frogs, technically, I think the frogs and ace are in wave six yeah because xerax and zork were wave five muckman and mondo are wave five vernon and rat king are wave five and then it wave six is like the frogs ace more frogs and wave seven and eight are really cool there's yeah. like 
Oh my God, there's so much cool <laughs> stuff. <laughs> no, no, that's that, that's awesome to hear. But but in between those waves, you know, you guys do those um, ultimate figures, and, and there were yeah. a couple of them on on the checklist as well. The the ultimate foot soldier, I, I assume he's going to be next because we've seen you know him yeah. on a little bit that he's the one up after Krang, yeah. Yeah, he was originally planned to be the first one out, and because mm -hmm. there was really it was just like the Alpha One head and a couple yeah. new parts. It was really just like loading up a foot soldier with like tons of weapons and all this all this cool stuff. And then I don't know, everything got all reshuffled <laughs> you know and it just it just happened that you know metalhead was ready to go everything was done everything was approved test shots looked good everything was just factory was just pushing forward with metalhead so then so we just shuffled everything around so yeah the the foot soldier i think is finally going to be coming out um that, that that'll be first quarter i don't know if it's shipping before or after cny if it's not shipping it'll be right like almost like i guess second quarter but yeah, that one's cool. Did we ever show the box for that one? No, Have you guys so. seen packaging art for that? I don't think so. It's really cool. It's that one also. It's got like three or four foot soldiers on the cover. They're on rooftops. It's all very Greg Martin, like VHS, like classic turtle VHS stuff. Well, and then maybe then right after that or sometime after that, the literal, the, the, the big one as far as those goes was that you guys like just went and tossed Chrome Dome um <laughs> out there um for everybody i have a chrome uh, dome for it oh yeah. dude i okay, was gonna ask so, you about his size because he was all over the place in the show <laughs> okay so here is android crane right uh -huh. yeah chrome dome as far as i know he's in two episodes and the first i think in like planet of the turtleoids or battle for the turtleoids or whatever that mm -hmm. one is he's more like an 18 inch figure he's, yeah. he's massive right and then like night of the rogues he's more like he, he shrinks the night of the rope so we went with that version mm -hmm. but well let me i'm gonna try to not break this because this is like a a 3d print that's kind of pinned and glued together oh, so wow. here's here's chrome dome he's like a full head taller than crane so wow. he's, <laughs> i think final production he should be around like nine and a half or like nine and three quarter inches so uh -huh. and, and his his eye line should be kind of right almost at like that mid-level on the the shelf <coughs> on the street diorama, oh, diorama. yeah the, the next level okay yeah but yeah so here's yeah chrome dome's big and next to a turtle or shredder you know like the turtles kind of come up to his fists but i got i got the fine cut for him from the factory a few uh, a couple months ago so i was playing with the articulation doing poses and He's going to have like two samurai swords, a blaster, like three or four sets of hands. So he's, you, you can put him in all kinds of like samurai and like these cool like ninja fighting poses and, and him versus Leonardo. Like, you know, in Night of the Rogues, they kind of have a little sword fight briefly. Uh -huh. He has a computer too, like a, just kind of a, a good generic computer because like Zach, the little kid Zach, mm -hmm. you know, plugs into his head and like sort of deprograms them or. Yeah or something you know so he, he comes with a computer and that's a great accessory to just like give to donatello or yeah you know shredder bebop and rocksteady are doing something the, the computer is a cool cool accessory but yeah chrome dome is he's gonna be really awesome yeah, yeah. the, the articulation is really good tons of accessories big wow. oversized crazy uh you know deluxe figure well i i'd even seen krang's android and i i, I know how big he is but he, he was huge in person. And then to see Chrome Dome being that much bigger, that, that, that adds a whole nother dimension to the, yeah, to the line. Yeah, I've seen pictures online, like people are getting their Krangs and they're sort of like, they have the figure and they're laying out all the accessories, you know, cause Krang came with like tons of weapons and mm -hmm. the new the new Krang figure, that all the hands I love and that new Krang. Yeah, it's, yeah, he's bigger. He still fits in the bubble walker, which is great. Yeah. You know, so it's just, yeah, the, the old, the original Krang, it was a little, he was just a little too small. You know, once we had this guy sculpted and, and sized up correctly, you put Krang in there and he's just kind of tiny because the way they draw him on the show, it's like Krang fills that entire little belly window, you mm -hmm. know, like, yeah. so you, you never really see the top of his head or whatever. Um, so Ra Randy was like, we should probably do it like a new Krang. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we, we did, we did a second Krang and 
and he's bigger and he's, you know, cool expression. And now he's like closed mouth and a little more cartoon accurate, I guess, but still like yeah. all interchangeable with the original one. So you have four tentacles, you have the bubble walker, everything is, can be swapped out and, you know, played his, with. his expression on this new one reminds me of when Shredder's like pleading with him constantly in season two and he's just sitting there he just doesn't want to have it he's just like he's like no leave me alone i want to watch my my uh soap operas (laughs) i'm gonna teleport you to earth now go away yeah (laughs) you know that that checklist alone was a huge um you know like i said uh it's got got people really talking so i I appreciate some of the 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 insight on on that and and it sounds like even with the year that it was, because like I said, it, it seems like the cartoon line um, exploded exponentially. It sounds like 2021 is going to be even bigger, huh? <laughs> it's yeah, definitely. Um, it just keeps yeah, the line keeps growing, and again, it's like we were doing you know four figures a year, or like a four pack, or like a couple heroes, couple villains, all you know, pretty much all reused parts, and now it's like the sky's the limit. You know, we can just do anything so we have this like master list of like all the stuff that i want to do like some really crazy out there characters and, and you know i'll just send the list to randy like here's maybe the next three or the next four and he's like yeah sounds good he's like these will be cool and it, that that's it it's just so every it's just green light like just do whatever you want <laughs> you know it's it's amazing sky's the limit i mean that that's awesome to hear about you know because we've talked about it like san diego and whatnot referred to as like the the cantina you know aliens of the turtle verse with like bebop and rock steady's gang and and guys going crazy you know with that um but but kind of you know if if you take a step outside of just the character selection i mean you know randy has talked about a couple of times now you know doing exploratory things with stuff with like the the turtle van and even you know sewer play sets i mean are we still like keeping that in the realm of possibility right now yeah, the van's sculpted. <laughs> van is done, it, and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's the the sewer playset is another one. Like we've been talking about that for for a long time. It would just be me and Dan like sitting around at night, just like drawing, like trying to figure out the layout. You know, and, like because in the show, it's like I have a. I have a pretty good idea of like ha- the, the actual floor plan of the sewer in the show, mm-hmm. but it doesn't, it doesn't quite work for the way you'd want to display the uh, an actual like toy play set because right. like the living room and the, and the kitchen are kind of like back to back, but visually they're like, where you like that fourth wall, you know, where like the TV screen is, it's not, it doesn't line up the same right. way right you'd be looking through a different wall of the kitchen so then and then there's that middle room where all their bedrooms are and then there's where they kind of shoot off into those little tunnels there's that middle bedroom area there's splinters like meditation room his bedroom donnie's lab yeah. you know so immediately there's like there's at least and then there's like their training dojo which, yeah. which is like almost like a hallway or like a the sewer pipe, you know, like a tunnel. It's like, what are the most iconic rooms? Probably the kitchen, probably the living room. Donnie's lab would be a great place set almost on its own with the, yeah. you know, the, all the, all, all the, uh, the crap that he like builds, you know, there's the, the teleporter wall, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. trying to lay all that out and make it like kind of accurate to the show, but also just having it be like this, this good, like kind of well thought out, like, place that it's it's been tricky to sort of to to get it all figured out because you don't want it to be too boring or but you also want it to be like accurate like if it doesn't look like it did on the show then it's right kind of misses the mark um so it's the 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 place that's been a tricky one to to lay out um but yeah it's we're definitely uh definitely looking at at doing that and then it's cool because it's going to be the way we kind of have it laid out right now is it's bigger than the street scene. It kind of gives a little bit of a street like to the, the street scene. So it comes out more. There's a, there's like a manhole cover that you can like kind of drop really? down. And yeah. But, and again, that too, it's like people's shelves, your, your shelves are only so big at home. So like, I'm going to have to reconfigure. <laughs> it's 
it's almost you're almost better off like just building it as like a kind of its own bookshelf or its own you know just display stand like it, make it like a functional piece of furniture yeah well, it, it's it's a work in progress it could be really really cool but but yeah. I, w I would assume that you know when you talk about the van and, and the sewer i mean that's a pretty big those are pretty big items for like retail space but you guys have had success yeah. now with the street scene diorama and token oh, yeah, that, that stuff really that'll all be like stuff. just sold on the website it'll be yeah. um you know yeah we'll, I, I think that those kind of items will just we'll do that ourselves because it's like a unique like kind of a a specialty thing the plan is to make those available through like you know whatever the NECA direct like yeah. just through our store that's crazy so and, and the, van, the van is the, the van, van is really cool well the the van the van in the show was always so much more interesting than than the toy one because the toy one just had you know seats in in the back all the way around right but, yeah you know, just like a bench on the one. side yeah the, the cartoon one has all of like Donnie's instruments and stuff. And then there's that window in the, in the roof that like they kind of peek through. And then there's the, there's like that yeah, little slot. So yeah. The, the van was, was it again, it's all like, do you remember that thunder in paradise show with Hulk Hogan? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> okay. So like, you know how, you know how it's just like a speedboat, right? Uh -huh. But then you'd go like below deck and there was yeah. like, there was like five different rooms and like a command center. Like <laughs> the turtle van is like that planning out the van. That's another big one. Like you watch the show and there's so many inconsistencies and like, sometimes the computer panel is on like the left side. Sometimes it's on the right. It just, however they storyboarded those shots, mm -hmm. it just serves the purpose of like the story. They, they never really bothered too much with continuity. Like sometimes the the side doors like they just flop down sometimes yeah. they like flip out and then there's the little piece on the bottom like similar to what the the toy was a couple yeah. times they have the the turret on there but not always um they do draw the turret sometimes like com like all compacted like folded up into the door sometimes there's a, a complete wall behind the driver's seat like you yeah. don't see you know from the back like there's ladder there's a ladder that goes up to that little viewing port like mm -hmm. on the dome and then sometimes it's not there at all it's just a wide open thing you'd see it right over the shoulder so we sculpted all of that stuff <laughs> and you can you can just do what you want with it you know like there's there's multiple doors there's like a battle there's it kind of goes into a battle mode so you can put yeah, you can put that wall in behind the driver's seat, or you can take it out. You can do whatever the hell you want. I think it's the left door flips down, the right door flips out. Yeah, and you can plug the turret in. Um, that's what we ended up doing. Right now, I think the we could mirror it so both walls have computers on them. But right now, one of them is like almost like the A team, like a weapons rack, and it uh -huh. has like little doors and cupboards. There's one episode with Lotus where they. The turtles are captured and the foot soldiers are just emptying out the van like because the van is like loaded with weapons yeah and the foot soldiers are like dumping the weapons out into the street <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like okay yeah maybe we'll just you know one of the walls the wall you, you you never see maybe that one's just like got a bunch of cabinets and then the the van does all kinds of crazy stuff like donatello will make a new invention or something you know the wheels flip down like the delorean and back to the future sometimes mm -hmm. uh sometimes it's disguised as like an ice cream truck you know and it yeah. has like big robotic like cartoony arms with like you know mickey mouse gloves <laughs> it's there's there, there's this grappling hook thing that comes out of the roof sometimes yeah. it's got like three or four cannons it shoots out like turtle shell grappling hooks so the van just can do anything and it's it is really tough like designing a toy yeah when you know we have so many different like all our restrictions and constraints and everything and like making a physical toy of this thing are like it's so different than what the writers and the the animators they, they could just make it do whatever it you know yeah. just draw it however they needed to draw it so it's tough like taking 200 episodes of like <laughs> that and trying to like get it down to its it's like kind of its its essence and then have all these cool plugins and add-ons and accessories and stuff so you can kind of make it your own thing um wow. that was the approach we took with the van so it's really cool hopefully we'll be showing pictures of that soon 
Um, I was going to say, is this a 2021 venture, hopefully? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, it should be. It's it, the thing. It's it's sculpted. We haven't printed it out yet. We don't have a prototype or anything, but it's yeah, yeah. It's pretty much pretty much done. It has all the bells and whistles, lights and sounds, and you know, little rumbling engine noises and light Whoa, up headlights. Really? Hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, wow. we're shooting for the for the moon on that. One. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like like you said, um, when it pretty much changes every single episode for 200 episodes there's a there's a lot of referential things to hit i suppose <laughs> we'll try to get as much of it in there as we possibly can and then just whatever the price has to be and kind of like maybe we eliminate this or we save mm -hmm. this for an accessory pack later you know kind of whittle it down without just you know stripping it of all the the cool stuff wow well um that's a <laughs> that, that, that's a pretty major a major thing to um kind of uh, wrap up the, the 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 cartoon conversation. So thanks for the details on that. I can't I can't yeah, wait sure. to to see how this is going to look. And like I said, I'm it's a good problem to have to reconfigure shelves and stuff like that. So I'm <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, it's there's a lot. I mean, just the <clears throat> the cartoon stuff alone. It's up to 40, 50 figures now. I think. And with you know with loot crate, we get to do a couple. You know, there's like the bunny suit. Rocksteady yeah. and Bebop and uh there's a lot of cool stuff for Loot Crate next year that we're they're about to announce I think in you know sometime in January um but really? we're doing like four more crates with loot so there's going to be another you know another movie figure another comic book video game cartoon figure plus a bonus figure yeah. um so yeah they like that definitely helps with just trying to get another you know just another weird uh <clears throat> either a side character or you know one of the main characters like in a kind of a, a different outfit or a different look you know mm -hmm. it's a great way to just get a few more variations out there well well speaking of, of comic because i wanted to touch on that really really quickly are, are you guys looking to to swing around um and and look at comics a little bit more closely as we get into the next year because yeah. that yeah that we're, check we're that a couple of april stuff now. In there. <laughs> oh yeah because we've we've done a lot with the video game stuff Mm -hmm. um and we're gonna kind of there's i think there's like one more video game wave that is coming out and we're gonna let that rest for a little while and then okay. we're gonna get back into comic books um in like classic like eastman and laird like the mirage comics yeah there's a couple really cool characters that like you need a toy of these figures you know and they're mm -hmm. there's a lot of cool accessories a lot of stuff is compatible with the original like comic turtle figures that we did yeah so you get to get some like upgraded cool stuff to go with them well even the turtles themselves kind of have the the eastman style um too that we we haven't seen yet there's there yeah. so many there's so many things that you can do with just the turtles for comics <laughs> there's going to be a, probably a couple waves of comic book stuff and those will go like to the plan is to to give those to like specialty shops in, in place of the video game stuff yeah exactly yeah. so just like yeah the way you're buying like turtles and time figures from online retailers and like the co comic book stores mom and pop shops mm -hmm. uh there's going to be comic book figures available there um awesome 2021 and, so and you said that the eastman and laird um stuff for sure ha, 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 do you guys have any interest or i guess availability to be able to like even dip into like later on stuff like archie stuff or you know mutanimal stuff for that type of stuff is that kind I, of yeah i really want to fans want it i know it's all really cool and it's different it's got its own look i've brought it up many many times it it's not um the Archie stuff's not included with like the with the Mirage comic agreement that we have with mm -hmm. Nick, so it's its own separate, uh, yeah, you know, license, I guess. But yeah, that's something we definitely want to we want to get to, and it's it's all just about like finding the right balance of like you know where it fits in the year and like kind of in between, you know, yeah, comic book and movie. It's just like finding the right you know the right time to to get to it. But that's definitely on our radar. I, I, there's a lot and there's cool characters in in the archie comics that like they didn't appear anywhere else you know like some yeah. of the mute animals and um that, that that's the way to get a proper ray fillet i think right because the cartoon i'm, not gonna... <laughs> I'm I, that's like one figure i have zero interest in making is like the cartoon 
appearance of Ray Filet. It's so he, he is one of, if not my favorite, vintage figure, and that cartoon yeah. version is just like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, and it yeah that one's just uh, I, there's no way that I'm working on <laughs> that. But yeah, doing an Archie version of Ray Flay would be awesome, or video games, or you know any. Hopefully, you know and that's one like I can't wait. Like Super Seven's gonna do a great job of Ray Flay, you know, because like yeah, because the toy is like this iconic, one of the best figures, like you said. Well, I, I think a lot of people will be excited to hear um, that more comic stuff uh, will 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 be coming. So so that that that's exciting and being able to get it through those specialty outlets. The the, the comic figures seem to be perfect for that. Stream, yeah, it, it that, makes that retail stream. It makes total retail. sense. That's where it all started, you know. Um, yeah, it was with all those. You know, we couldn't we couldn't do any like big box like mass retail stuff when we originally yeah. started the turtles like well I, I wasn't even involved back then it was like 2008 or 2007 or something when that when mm -hmm. randy and the horsemen were doing that stuff it's cool to get back to that i, I guess i gotta ask what's your what's your overall hope um in terms of you know the turtle stuff that that you're you're doing i mean the the sky's the limit right i mean is it literally like getting everybody <laughs> getting as close to everybody as possible maybe not you know, great filet. We'll, okay. we'll yeah. end the line like just before that. We'll have done everyone else. We'll do like tattoo and mer dude and oh, you know, man, all tattoo. These other... He was the hamster in the show, right? <laughs> he, yeah, they like they they use some like retro mutagen thing or I don't know what happens and like yeah, tattoo just reverts like goes back to a like a hamster for some reason. Yeah, it makes no sense, but. <laughs> He's in the show. He's cool. There's, I, yeah, there's a lot of, I love the old, like I told you, Roku Saki and, and Yoshi, there's like all the Foot Clan backstory stuff is great. So again, in the, in the cartoon, one of my favorite characters is, is Shibano Sama, who's like this ancient Foot Clan, like, like a uh, ghost. You know, he was like the leader or like the founder of the Foot Clan. And then there's, Hamato Koji, which is like Splinter's ancestor. Okay. He technically, I think he, Hamato Koji, like took the teachings of Shibano Sama and then made the Foot Clan. And like, I'd love to do all those crazy characters just because it's all, you know, it just ties into, um, you know, like the history, like the legend of, of the Foot. Um, they would be great. I don't think anyone remembers those characters except for me. Well, Dirt, Dirtbag and Ground Chuck are a couple of vintage figures that I really like too, because it was one of those things that it's like, this is exactly what I wanted to see with, you know, Turtles at the time was like more, more mutants of, of these crazy characters. I always, and they showed I always up loved for, when I think, a toy showed up on the show. It was just like in He-Man, like if Cobra Khan, like, or Web Store, or, you know, they weren't in a lot of episodes, but like Tongue Lasher shows up, it's like, holy crap, like. You know, I wish yeah. there was more of that stuff. You know, I like if Half Court showed up on Ninja Turtles, like that would have been so yeah. cool. Lionheart or Dr. L. <laughs> yeah, Dr. L. Yeah, and Pizza Face and all those. Yeah, I wish they I wish oh, they got man. more of the toys into the show. They're, it was just neat to see them like moving around, like hearing their voice, like, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I loved all that stuff. So, yeah, it's like it's like we talked about. There's a lot of Cantina alien kind of characters that we can it, it is like that now like we're doing like these deep cut things like star wars it's like they're they made figures of everybody and you can kind of do that with well, turtles too you know well scrag yeah. and the rest of the guys it's like you only saw them for one second when they were mutated but all of those dudes looked awesome their legend were, lives on they were yeah that's it like two yeah. like scrag has like three seconds of screen time or something and but he's great, mm -hmm. you know, and all those other characters that yeah. got mutated, they're all cool. Like, it would be great to do, you know, the Bebop and Rocksteady's gang. That would be awesome. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we'll do it. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep for that for sure. But hey, um, Trevor, I, I appreciate you uh, taking so much of your time uh, this afternoon for, for chatting with us. I appreciate it. Like I said, um, We'll be able yeah, sure. to get to be around when Boy Fair is supposed to be, um, since it's not going to be in uh, February. Are you guys gonna Are you guys gonna do kind of your own thing again for that? Yeah, we'll um, yeah, like we'll you do, do our own thing. It'll be some virtual thing. I, we haven't I haven't talked to Randy about what we're doing yet. It'll be, yeah. 
you know, we'll have something. We'll be putting pictures online and showing off some new prototypes. Yeah. I mean, cool. yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll be something. I don't know what <laughs> it's the pandemic, I'm, you know, I'm looking era. forward to it. And it's crazy. And it, it saves a flight into New York City, I guess, in the middle of February, which is always its own uh, <laughs> yeah. adventure. Yeah, right? you won't have so, to deal with like uh, any sort of, you know, blizzards or potential uh, getting stranded at like Newark Airport or, you know, LaGuardia yeah. or wherever. That'll be nice. Well, you can um, enjoy it from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, definitely. Well, again, um, thank thank you very much. Um, you know, keep... Uh, Keep doing what you guys are doing. It's it, it's exciting, and uh, I, I hope you have a, a really good new year, and we will be chatting again soon, okay? Yeah, thanks, man. Good to talk to you. Happy New Thank Year. You. Appreciate Same it. Year. Okay. Bye. Bye.